Hi, I'm Mike and welcome back to the Sanders Kitchen. We got a great recipe for you today. It's called Seafood Cubillon. I want to just educate you a little bit. Now, there's two different terms that you will see. One is called court bouillon, or pronounced coubillon. And what that is, is a French term meaning to poach the fish in a vegetable stock with seasonings and white wine. But the Cajun term couvillon, with a V, it's pronounced couvillon, uh, is simply a Cajun fish stew. Now, I had to write that down because I didn't want to be confused myself, but we are making couvillon, okay? That's what we'll be making today. Let me show you what's in the recipe. There's a lot of stuff here. Don't let it shake you. Everything's going to be in the description, the whole recipe. So what we have is, to start off with, we have onions. We have one onion, bell pepper, celery. We have fresh parsley and we have garlic. I picked a whole bunch of green onion from the garden outside and you know we're growing it and, and I love fresh green onion. Uh, we're gonna use it in the, the mix and as a garnish as well. Uh, we also are growing fresh basil so we're gonna be using some fresh basil. Uh, that might not be traditional but it's the way I want to do it and that's just, you know, if you want to cook this, you can add or subtract what you want to do for yourself. Now we have Worcestershire sauce, some uh, extra virgin olive oil, cayenne pepper. We have our own homemade shrimp stock. You can see the residue at the bottom. Oh man, when I stir this up, it is going to be good. Now I have about two and a half quarts available in just in case I need that. Uh, we're going to be using some crushed tomatoes or whole tomato, well, I'm going to crush them anyway, and some tomato sauce, white wine, a little bit of our homemade caliente, which you can get if you want to order it. And um, we're going to be using some Cajun land, black and red fish seasoning, you can get that online too. But the star of the show, if I, you look, if I forgot anything, I'll add, don't worry about it, it'll be there. But the star of the show is about two pounds of fresh Gulf shrimp and about three and a half pounds of fresh catfish. And it's right there in the plate. But let me tell you, this is gonna be good. Now you can add redfish. You could, you could use trout if you like. Trout's a little soft, but you know, hey, catfish or redfish. So what I'm gonna do next is move everything out of the way, cut all of my veggies up, get ready to start cooking. I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, forgot a couple of things. You know, we're gonna make a roux. All purpose flour, half a stick of butter, and hey, whoop, whoop, some bay leaves. Gotta have a few of those. So now let's get to cutting everything up. All the veggies are cut up and the pot's heating up and we're gonna put in our butter and our olive oil and start to saute our veggies. That is our first step. Time to add in the onions. 
and all of the rest of the veggies. Onions, bell pepper. Some celery. Some parsley. And my garlic. And a little bit of green onion. We'll stir this around. Add in a little salt. This is kosher salt. And pepper. Maybe a half a teaspoon. It's, uh, it's time to just let this saute. It's gonna take maybe eight, 10 minutes. Veggies are sauteing nicely. I decided to add in maybe another, you know, half of stick of butter. I'll add that to my ingredient list. It's not dry, I just wanted to add some in. And a little bit more olive oil too. We'll continue to saute this until it gets soft and the onions are translucent and believe me, they're almost there now. Oh, the veggies are looking good. They look fine, just like it's ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my quarter cup of flour. This is about a half a cup right here, so I'm only gonna use about half. What I need to do is incorporate the flour into the, all of the veggies until you can't see it anymore. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Okay. okay my veggies are coated well, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my white wine. Now the wine's going to start deglazing the bottom of the pot. But it's still not enough liquid yet, but it's, a, it's gonna add a great flavor. So the next thing we're gonna do is add in the tomatoes. and the tomato sauce. Now I'm gonna stir this in and I will crush up those plum tomatoes as I'm stirring, but I'll stir that in and as you can see, it's taking on that reddish look, that tomato sauce look. So you'll see that it is pretty thick now because of the flour, right? So I'm gonna turn my fire down a little bit, about halfway, and I'm gonna stir up my stock. My, this is actually shrimp stock. So I stirred it up because I want everything off the bottom, and I'm gonna add it to this can of sauce because I wanna get all of the sauce out of that can that I possibly can, and now, I'll just start adding it in. Oh man, does that smell good. Mm. This is the base for the Cubillon. Now let's go ahead, turn the fire back all the way up. And you know, as it cooks, it'll get a little thicker. So we don't want to start out too thick. So we'll thin it out with the shrimp stock. Okay, so we're at a point where we can go ahead and add in our basil. And now let's add in some spices. Now this is that Cajun land blackened redfish seasoning. Let's go ahead and add in a couple of good sized tablespoons of that. 
We can always add more, right? Now this is a teaspoon and this is cayenne pepper, but I'm only going to use about a half a teaspoon, about that much. I'm also going to add in some of our homemade Tabasco hot sauce, which is actually, we call it caliente, but it's made with Tabasco pepper. So here we go. We're going to pour it right in there. It's kind of thick. Oh yeah. But let's not forget, we need to add the Magic Potion Worcestershire sauce. Okay, we're gonna add two, two tablespoons. And now, we'll just stir everything around with my flat spoon. So before I put the lid on, I'm gonna go ahead and put my bay leaves in. Don't forget, count them before you put them in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the reason why I count them is because before I serve, I wanna take the bay leaves out. If you don't care, then leave them in and let, them, let your company lick the sauce off the leaves. It doesn't matter, that's what I do. So at this point, what we're gonna do is put the lid on and we're gonna simmer for about 30 minutes. Then when 30 minutes is up, we'll go ahead and add in the fish and the shrimp. And in the meantime, I'm gonna take some of this blackened redfish seasoning and I'm gonna sprinkle it all over the fish just to give it a little more flavor than just bland fish. And when this is ready, we'll come back and show you we're gonna tuck all the fish and shrimp in, simmer it for another half hour, and it'll be ready to eat. So stick around. This is gonna be really, really good. Well, only a few more minutes until the sauce is ready to put the fish in, you know? So um, we're gonna go ahead and season. I'm, I'm seasoning up the fish just a little bit here, not much. It's a light sprinkle. I don't want to overspice the whole pot, but I don't want the fish to be bland. So if you want to omit this step, that's up to you. But I know I'm going to love it. And, uh, and now the fish are ready. And now I'm going to do the same thing, just a little bit to the shrimp, not much. Add a little bit of spice. And that's all I need to do. And in a few minutes, we'll get the pot back over here and we'll add all the fish and shrimp to it. It's gonna be really good. I can't wait to eat it. Wow, this looks beautiful. Notice that the red sauce has now turned a little brown. That is what we are looking for. So, we're turning the fire down all the way to a low, low simmer. And I want to go ahead and put the shrimp in first. Now, everything goes in raw. Nothing gets pre-cooked. So we're going to put the shrimp in first and then stir it around a little bit. But when we put the fish in, we're gonna be careful not to stir it that much. So we'll just take the fish and just lightly push it down and we'll put all of the fish in the same way until they're all in the pot. And the last piece will go about right there and we'll just nestle those little fishies down in that beautiful sauce and we're gonna let it stay on a very, very low, low simmer for about another 20 to 30 minutes until the fish and the shrimp are cooked. And then the rice will be done and we'll 
get on with the eating because I am anxious to get this on a plate. Okay, the Kubion is finished. We already plated it up because I had to take a couple of pictures, okay? But it's time for me to eat. But there's one thing I want you to know before I eat. And that is make sure when you make this that you let it stay a little thick when, you, when you're simmering. You want it to be a little thick because when you put the fish and the shrimp in, the fish and the shrimp release their waters that are inside their bodies and, and it just uh, dilutes the sauce. Now my sauce happens to be perfect because I did let it stay a little thick, but I wanted to warn you in case you do make this, you don't want it to be too thin on the tail end. So make sure that it's a little thick, okay? now. Uh, before you put the fish in and, and the shrimp. Okay, so my mouth is running water. I can't wait to dig in. Uh, now, I did taste it earlier, and, you know, Pam and I both agreed that it needed uh, a little bit more of the uh, blackened uh, seafood seasoning, the blackened fish seasoning. Uh, it's a great flavor, but because we put so much fish and shrimp in, and even though I did season it, it just still needed a little bit more. So I added almost a tablespoon and, and that did it. And then I added a little bit of salt. So guess what? Salt and pepper to your taste and spice it the way you like it. Don't overspice it because I like it spicy, okay? All righty, so here we go. A nice big piece of shrimp with some rice. And don't forget the green onion on top. Mmm. 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 That was a huge shrimp. Now let me have a piece of fish. A little gravy, a little rice, and a little piece of fish, with some green onion on it. Mmm. Mmm. The fish is so tender but it's cooked. And the way you would tell if the fish is cooked, take a piece out, put it on your plate, take a couple of forks and pull it. If it just pulls apart, then guess what, it's cooked. It's delicious, you don't have to have rice, you can eat it like that, that's the way Pam likes it. But please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell, that way you know when we come out with new videos right away. So anyway, guys, thank you so much. We love you guys. We really appreciate you guys commenting and subscribing and being our friends on YouTube. Have a great week. Hope you enjoy the dish and God bless you.